this time around, I'm staying at home, and things are gonna get better. Settling in, loving my wife, but then I got that letter. My black son, my black son, now he say my heart is getting bigger. Don't even remember sleeping with that lady, but I did. My black son, he's coming to stay. My black son, he's making each day the best that he can. Also, he's my king. What's up, everybody? It's MCZX, the Prince of the Smart Kingdom, and you're tuned into another episode of Brand Warfare. How you doing? Hope you're doing freaking great this week. I sure in the hell am. Let's just jump right into it. Starting with Raw, we have Ambrose opening the show. It was cool, but I do think this was a little unnecessary. I don't know why Miz and Ambrose are still feuding. It feels like they've been feuding for a million years. I'm kind of tired of it. I would like Miz to give someone else another opportunity, maybe an Apollo Crews, maybe. Or uh, well, move Dillinger to uh, Raw. Well, we'll get to that later. But, 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 but. We all knew this was going to lead to a confrontation with Seth. I mean, that's why they was building this up. It just made sense. I was hoping Ambrose would go heel and hit Seth with the chair, just for old time's sake. Obviously, that wasn't going to happen. Miz and the Miz Taraj came down, and they ruined that little moment. I did love how the Miz Taraj kept entering the ring like the Shield once did. I don't know if y'all caught that the first week, but they all entered the ring like the Shield. All this feud is missing is Roman, and I think the inevitable Shield reunion is going to happen unless they replace Roman with someone else. Maybe Cassius Ono, like he was originally supposed to be. Moving forward, we had Bailey with two wins! Two wins! Two wins! Bailey's she's she's transforming back to her old self, I think, y'all. She has two wins, and it was insane. Bloody insane. I am wondering where was this Bailey during the Alexa feud? Where where was this one at? Because she beat Alexa clean twice. Twice. And if she would have just did that during the Extreme Rules match, maybe I wouldn't have so many bad things to say about her. But but Hopefully this is the match with Sasha next week because they did go backstage to figure out who's going to be number one contender. And Sasha said it should be her. Bailey was like, nah, I beat her twice. Clean, pinned her decisively, one, two, three. And they're going to have a match. So hopefully the match with Sasha next week will do something to one of the characters. I don't know who's going to evolve first. Maybe Sasha will go heel finally. Or maybe Bailey will take that much-needed break off. I really hope this doesn't have anything to do with that Corey Graves uh, storyline that they're trying to push, because I don't want it. I don't want it. Neither do you. None of us want it. It sounds like it's going to be terrible for, for everyone. I, I do need an evolution of the boss or the hugger. Also, uh, I also like to point out that Bailey wins when, uh, Sasha, Sasha is around. When Sasha Banks is around, Bailey seems to be a winning machine, but when she's on her own, she can't do anything, and they need to point that out. Sasha needs to point that out, or someone needs to point that out, because it, it, it's true. Uh, they had two Cruiserweight matches on this episode of Raw. I, they're forgettable, because they were both setups. Uh, the Tazawa match was just a setup for the rematch on Tuesday with um, Arya Davari, which was a decent match on 205 Live, I won't lie, but eh, still, mm -mm, it shouldn't be on Mondays. And the... Uh, the tag team match was just a setup for Gulak and Ali. Mind you, why would you start the show with Gulak and Mustafa Ali when that should have closed the show? That's what we've been fighting for, but they made the thing about Tazawa, which made no clear clue to me. But whatever. The Cruiserweights, y'all know how I feel about the Cruiserweights. They need help, man. They need to be changed. Something has to change for this to work. Then we had Enzo with his promo. I don't know about y'all. I'm getting tired of it already. I, I, I've i already grown out of it. The, the thing's over. Cass is on his own. Enzo's on his own. Let's move forward. Let's not harbor on the fact that Cass is on his own and Enzo is like a hurt ex-girlfriend. Like, oh, how could you do that to me? How could you throw me 14 feet down a ramp? Why, why would you do that? Why would you do that? It's just, it's just wrong. I think if Enzo's not going to be wrestling, I could see him managing the big show for a short period of time. Uh... I just want this to be over with. I also, you know, when Enzo brought up uh, you being seven foot tall didn't win a championship, a tag team championship for us. Uh, 
I like to point out that neither did Enzo's wrestling ability. Clearly, Cass did all the work. You just talked a good game. So neither one of y'all can win championships. So I don't think the pot calling the kettle black is a good uh thing to, to say to Cass right now. I mean, you haven't done much either. Cass has done most of the work. Balor versus the Drifter was next, which was a decent match. Also, uh, the Drifter hit the hell out of uh, Balor with the guitar. Kind of double J much. Not not the J we're about to get to in a couple of seconds. But he did uh, pull a Jared and hit him with the guitar, except he hit him with the wrong party. Cut uh, Balor open. If you looked on Twitter, had a big little, not a, not a big gash, but a nice little cut that uh, got us some blood on TV. And then, you know, Mad Libs Wyatt comes back with, I want you to suffer. No. <laughs> I'm going I'm to I'm send you to... Just to hell, because I'm a god, and you you are just a demon. God's big demons. And, oh, 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 oh. and I'm like, oh, God, oh, God. We, we already knew this was going to happen. Bray teased it once Finn came back to wrestle after, I believe, the concussion thing. Uh, or it was during the brand split, right? Like, right when the brand split. Maybe not the concussion thing. It was probably right when they split it up. The brands, and Bray showed up on Raw and interrupted Bray, I mean, interrupted, uh, Balor for a match, and I was like, oh, man, this is going to happen. Well, Demon King versus the Mad Lib Wyatt at SummerSlam, it's coming. And as you heard in the intro to this show, Jason Jordan is Kurt Angle's son. <laughs> this is why Raw was really quirky, because it, it's funny. We all know Jason Jordan is not Kurt Angle's son. Come on, man. We all know this. And it all started as a meme. If, you, if you've never seen the meme, the meme is... If you put Charmel and Kurt Angle, remember when uh, Kurt Angle was stalking Charmel and they kind of did something backstage? Yeah. If you put Charmel and Kurt Angle together, right underneath is Jason Jordan. And it kind of, yeah, it's a funny meme. I think it's a funny meme. Anyway, <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's funny. I'm having a ball with this. I think this is great for Jason Jordan because he was just kind of lost in the shuffle along with Chad Gable on SmackDown Live. So maybe him showing out on Raw, even though this is weird that he's Kurt Angle's son, when really he's Jason Jordan of American Alpha, maybe he can shine more as a single competitor. And maybe you could get like a heel Kurt Angle pushing his son into matches he doesn't belong in, kind of doing the Roman Reigns thing, except it's funny. And uh, it'll make sense. Maybe starting him with the United States Championship. That'll be the next thing for the Miz instead of Rollins. How about we get uh, Miz versus Jason Jordan? That That would be cool. That'd be cool. But there are downsides to this because American Alpha are officially split up and another tag team's down the drain. And it's like, because we can and we will. And and that seems to be the ideal creative. Just like, I'm just going to do it because we can and I'm going to do it. I didn't like that. I kind of feel like another tag team's going to break up, possibly at SummerSlam. Hype bros are going to break up, but that's for the better because neither one of them are winning the uh, tag team titles on SmackDown. This also means the brand split doesn't mean anything because if I can just swap super superstars whenever I want, it undermines it. Like, that's why I'm saying Ty Dillinger can just come to Raw and we can switch Ty Dillinger for uh, um, Big Show to SmackDown. Send Big Show and Enzo to SmackDown for Ty Dillinger so he can feud with the Miz since they're Twitter beefing. But, man, it... it it's a good and bad thing. I, I'm, I'm going to just let it play out. I don't, want, I don't want people to just crap all over the Jason Jordan angle. But I think this is good. Then you have the Revival uh, versus the Hardys. And I really think the Revival should break the Hardys because they're, they're so good at putting teams on the shelf, man. They're, they When they were doing it in NXT, look what they did to TM61. So they're just gone forever. <laughs> I think they're coming back maybe next year. But the, the Revival would be the perfect team to feud with. The Hardys, while they're broken, it just seems like it's comical enough for it to work. And at the same time, it could be serious because there are no uh, flips, just fists versus the broken universe, which is just the opposite of that. It'd be great. But we had Anderson and Gallows kind of awkwardly looking at a TV because, you know, no one watches the TV on an angle. But we had those two staring. So I don't know if this is going to lead to like a tag team triple threat to see who faces the bar or does the... Callows and Anderson want a piece of the Revival. Who knows? Or maybe they want to team up with the Revival and kind of form this little group. A, a, a club, I might say. A club. But we will have to watch and see what happens after that. But main event of the show was Joe versus Reigns, and it was great as usual. 
because those who have great chemistry, you'd be a fool to say some more John Roman Reigns don't have great chemistry. They always put on dope-ass matches, and it was great. I kind of want Joe to stay undefeated against Roman Reigns because it would just be cool to have that notch in his belt like I've never been beaten by Roman Reigns. It's never going to happen. Of course, the match ends with a no contest because Braun, the superhuman, returned to interrupt the match. I called that last week. I'm glad it happened because now it may confirm that we're getting that fatal four-way at SummerSlam. And that's going to be completely chaotic. Can you imagine? Braun Strowman destroys Roman Reigns. And I've destroyed Brock Lesnar. And I destroyed Samoa Joe. And I'm the new Universal Champion. Bro! <laughs> I guess you can say Raw is predictable, but I enjoyed it. And moving on to SmackDown Live. I, I think JD pointed this out, but I'm going to point it out as well. This did feel like a really weird episode of Raw. Like, this felt like a, a episode of Raw I didn't ask for. Didn't want it, to be quite honest. Uh, I don't know what's changed in the writing, but something, something's clearly gone wrong. Maybe they've lost a writer, or they swapped writers as well. As, and, you know, we're switching talent, we're going to swap writers too. Maybe they're doing both. But, I don't know. First things first. Why in the hell do you bring the Punjabi prison to SmackDown Live? Especially in Alabama! What, what, what does that do for any of this pay-per-view that's coming up on Sunday? This does nothing. The damn match hasn't happened in 10 years. So you're going to show me the prison that you guys are not going to do anything with. You're not going to interact with each other. You're not going to fight. You're just going to talk and explain the rules and insult each other. That's that's not good. That doesn't hype up a match at all. That, that does the opposite, actually. It makes me not want to watch the match. It makes me want this to be over with. The highlight is what Orton climbing up the the prison and we're like, oh, I gotta, I'm gonna cut a promo and I'm gonna kill you in that prison and kick your ass, cause blah 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 blah, America, America, America. And Jinder said the same thing. You know what I'm about to do? You don't like me because of my people, and that's why you chant USA. That very reason you're arrogant and you're stupid, and I am going to cut us. Uh, uh, Randy Orton off the top of the Punjabi prison. I am tired of this. I I can't believe I'm saying this, but can we get Cena and Mahal done now? Let's just get that out the way, bro, because uh, this was a really bad move on the SmackDown's part to even show the prison. You could have did anything else but bring the Punjabi prison. And I, uh, man, God, it's a stupid move, such a stupid move. Then you got Chad Gable reacting to Jason Jordan, and it was exactly what I expected. Um, what? Yeah, that, 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 that's how we all felt, I guess, even though we all knew it was coming, but, um, what? <laughs> um, I hope Chad is going to get a decent solo push and not like the Harper solo push where you kind of see him sometimes and he disappears and you're like, oh, hell, we're not going to get you know, Gable again until it's a battle royal. I hope that Chad Gable takes the United States title off of AJ Styles or Kevin Owens, whoever has it, because it it, it makes sense for him to hold it. He's American Alpha, duh. It should be Chad Gable holding the United States Championship. It would be great. It would be great. And the reason I say it is because I do not want to see AJ versus Shinsuke Nakamura at SummerSlam. It, it doesn't need to happen. I will elaborate more when we get to the main event. Gable is absolute money, like I said on the last episode. So he'll be fine on his own. I think the same thing goes for Jordan. But we'll just have to see how they're booked and how everything's written for them. As long as, it, as it's not something stupid, man. I, 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 I have high hopes for him. And here comes another little point in the show. Um, so as I've been pointing out on Twitter... At the Smart Kingdom. Uh, Mike Canales and Maria Canales and Sami Zayn are going to have a match. We, we knew this was going to happen. But I was expecting the match to happen at Battleground. Just like every other internet wrestling fan. We all knew it was going to happen. We, we all knew it was going to be Battleground. We get to see Mike Bennett slash Canales have his first match. But no. This SmackDown debuts him in Alabama. Again, why? The crowd wasn't into it. So why would you debut him there? It's just, ugh, it's so stupid. And you made him face Sami Zayn on free television. 
Why? There's so many other guys there. He could have, A, faced instead of Sammy. He could have faced, uh, Ty Dillinger. He could have faced Harper. He could have faced anyone else to debut against. But why the hell did he have to face Sammy Zayn? It makes no sense at all. It was free. It was free. Why would you screw with his debut like that? You know, like, it doesn't make any sense. He should have debuted at Battleground with a better crowd. And then him and Sammy could have had the first match of many matches they're going to have. I know the writers could have wrote one more segment to prep that match between Sammy and Mike. You could have had Sammy attack Mike backstage and, you know, for hitting him with a glass jar backstage. A uh, vase, rather. You could have had Sammy interrupt another segment and come return the favor. But no, 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 no. I don't understand the logic of rushing into something like that so fast when we could take it slow. It just doesn't make any sense. Sammy <laughs> Sammy and Mike are just in for, I, I don't know, a weird thing. I think they have a rematch at Battleground. It's probably on the kickoff show. Shame. Shame. Shame on you. And now, from one low point to another low point, you got John Cena cutting this cheap Pops promo where he's referencing every war America's been through, referencing the flag, and then he referenced 9-11... To hype up a f***ing flag match. Come, come on, people. He referenced every awful war we've been in as a good thing to hype a fictional flag match that's already predetermined. I get it. It's a cheap pop because look where we're at. We're in Alabama. It was a cheap pop. But what a waste of time, man. We didn't need that. We, I didn't need that. That, that oh, I'm good American. American, 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 Cena. And then... You referenced 9-11 for, to hype up a flag match. Does anyone see why this is not a good thing? The only great part was Rusev came and kicked his ass, and I appreciated it. And then you have Becky versus Charlotte. Live TV, again, fine, fine, I get it. We have six women. I can't give you the same baby versus heel match every week on SmackDown. we got to switch it up. But Charlotte versus Becky is a pay-per-view match. At the same time, it's going to be a good match. And they don't have to go completely crazy. But I, I don't know, man. It's, it's a 50-50. It's a, it's, a, it's a match that I would sell for a pay-per-view. But at the same time, SmackDown's about wrestling. And I need two people who can go. So I would put those two out there. It, it's okay. But it could have been against Miss No Charisma. Tamina, who I suggest should take an improv class or just never speak and let Lana do all the talking because good lord, Tamina, stop talking, sweetie. I, I, I like I, I like you. I really do. I really do. I'm glad you're not just in the back of catering like you were on Raw before the brand split. I'm glad that you're actually getting to wrestle and being featured and stuff. But man, you got to work on your charisma. You just sound like cardboard. I am not letting you fight, Lana. Sure told her. Like, I, I don't I don't want that. I don't want that. But, to me, you got to get it together. You got to get it together. And now we get to our main event, which, look, look. It was AJ Styles and Nakamura, the Dream Tag Team versus Owens and Corbin. Look, y'all, uh, AJ and Nakamura shouldn't be anywhere near each other till Mania or the Royal Rumble. Having them give that... Sample at Money in the Bank between each other was a complete mistake. It was awesome, but it was a mistake. It should have been interrupted by Corbin or Ziggler right when they were about to swing on each other. Corbin should have came and hit Shinsuke in the back, and Ziggler could have dragged AJ out, and they could have kept brawling instead of having those two in that match. Having Nakamura say backstage, if you call, I'll answer, made me want to shove my head up a rhino's ass. I, I don't need that to happen, I do not need that to happen to me or my head. We don't need to see uh, Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles at SummerSlam. It's a Mania caliber match. I pray it isn't thrown on SummerSlam. The, the match wasn't bad, but you know when you've seen something a bunch of times, you just you kind of get desynthesized to it and you don't care anymore. Um, I did like Corbin interrupting Nakamura's uh, entrance, but besides that, I watched the match on autopilot. I kind of had a feeling the heels were going to win because I think the last time they did this match, it was either a six-man or it was this exact match. Uh, the faces won. So the heels won. I was like, yay. 
at the same time, I also wanted KO to take the U.S. title away from AJ, so AJ could chase the title again, and and not have AJ versus Shinsuke at uh, SummerSlam. Maybe have AJ versus Gable versus KO for the United States Championship at SummerSlam, and have Sami Zayn versus Shinsuke Nakamura at SummerSlam. Have barn burner matches instead of giving away dream matches at SummerSlam. I get it's the second biggest event, but we don't need that to happen right now. That that match is not a SummerSlam match. It's a ma- WrestleMania match, man. Definitely a WrestleMania match. And a quick side note, I know the pyro's gone, but I need it back because some of these entrances are just awkward on Raw and SmackDown to watch with no pyro. It's about that time, and I think I know where I'm going with this. This is going to be a no-brainer for me. The winner of this week, two weeks in a row, Raw wins again because SmackDown, I don't know what the hell's going on there, but SmackDown is, is, I got nothing. I don't know what's going on with the uh, writing, but they need to fix that because it's supposed to be the better show. Hell, when this series started, SmackDown was winning every single week, and now Raw is winning. I don't know. I don't know. But... That's all I got for y'all, man. That's it for this episode of Brand Warfare. I hope you enjoyed it, man. Uh, I'm MCZX The Prince. You can follow Smart Kingdom on Twitter at The Smart Kingdom. Go find us on Facebook at The Smart Kingdom. Go like all our stuff. Like, share, subscribe with your friends. Spread the word about us. And until next time, tuck all your illegitimate children. <laughs> tuck all your illegitimate children to bed at night. And I'll see you later. Goodbye.